Last weekend, I underwent one of the most harsh and difficult challenges a human can endure. Spending 48 hours programming in Python. Now if you know me or any of my friends, you'll know that we aren't particularly the biggest fans of Python. Needless to say, I was expecting the worst from this. This idea actually spawned in late November when Polymars invited me to make a game in Python with him. We'd done a jam a few months prior to this, so instead this time we decided to go head to head. Today I'm going to guide you through my experience making a game with Python. I decided to stream my reaction to the theme as well as the framework I was using, so live on YouTube I went to h.io to unveil the theme for the jam. This jam was the Pygame Community Game Jam and to give credit where credit is due, they actually gave a bunch of really good themes for participants to choose from. Out of all of them though, I was most enticed by snow. So with the themes in mind, I thought up an idea where a snowman holding a cup of coffee has to reach an exit before they melt. This idea seemed to really appeal to me, but the thought of all the level design really didn't. So I went back to the drawing board and I morphed my idea into a randomly generated dodging game where you play as a snowball and have to dodge rocks that will fall from the sky while trying to collect falling snowballs to keep yourself from melting. This idea seemed much more achievable, so we went with that. The first thing I did was load up VS Code as well as the Pi game documentation and just tinkered around for a little bit trying to understand how it actually worked. And to be fair, Pi game was extremely easy to understand and very quickly I had a window up and running. So the next logical step after this was to draw and move a player around the window. However, when moving the player around the window, there is an obvious fundamental issue. That being that the player seemed to speed up and slow down seemingly randomly. And this is due to our game currently having a variable interval between frames. So basically, in any modern computer, the GPU is responsible for displaying screen refreshes or frames to the screen in succession. The issue is, depending on how intensive our frame actually is, the GPU may take longer to process and render that frame. One way to get a constant interval between frames is to use VSync, which caps the frame rate to the monitor's refresh rate and pumps out a frame at a fixed interval. This doesn't, however, fix our issue fully, as there are a ton of different refresh rates in modern monitors. The biggest issue with it though is that the GPU has to be capable of rendering a greater number of frames than the monitor's refresh rate, which isn't always possible in modern computers. Another way to solve this, and the proper way to solve this problem, is by using something called delta time. In layman's terms, delta time is a number that we can multiply something by to ensure it moves at a constant rate, regardless of the hardware in the system. So let's imagine we have a player with a step size of 10. This means each frame they're going to move 10 units. So in a game running at 10 FPS, the player will move 100 units per second, whereas a game running at 5 FPS, the player will move 50 units per second. So if you multiply the step size by the time since the last frame, or delta time, the calculations now become 10 times 0.1 units per second and 5 times 0.2 units per second, which are now both equal to 1 and we've solved the issue. An imperative part of any game is user inputs. Unfortunately, Pygame actually has built-in support for inputs, so that's really helpful. At this moment in time, we have three inputs, left, right, and jump. So all we need to do is make a boolean array with three elements and when a certain key is pressed, it sets the value of its assigned array index to true and when the key is released, it sets it back to false. Then back in our movement code, we can do our movement logic based on if these booleans are true. Something else that is quite important in a game about avoiding obstacles is collision detection, obviously. The Pi game actually has built-in collision detection, but we're not going to use it. And you may be wondering why, which to be honest is a very valid question. And the answer is I just didn't know it existed until after the jam had ended, to be quite frank. My custom collision system is quite vanilla in the way it works. I wrote a custom box glider class that has a variable for the top, bottom, right and left sides of the box. And we essentially just loop through all the colliders in the scene and check if the bottom of the box is below the top of the player. If it is, then we can check if the left or right of the box intersects with the player. And if both of these checks are true, then we have a collision. And it's probably not the most efficient solution in the world, but we are on a time limit, so it'll do for now. At this point, we were around three hours into the jam and I was getting infuriated by my messy code. So I spent an hour refactoring it into an object-oriented system. When I returned to development, I was a little tired of coding, so instead decided to work on the game's visuals. Now, a lot of you will probably know that I'm not the most amazing artist in the world. So this went about as well as you'd expect. At first, I attempted to make some pixel art, I finished the ground and decided that maybe vector art would be better. So I started making some vector art and uh, yeah, that, that, that went even worse. So for my final attempt, I decided to try pixel art one more time. The results are questionable, but they'll do for now. I then called it a night ready to pick things back up in the morning. So with yesterday's failures, I was more motivated than ever to make my game look better. So to help me fix it, I messaged two-time pixel art world champion Reese Joffrey. 
Reese Joffrey. Reese Joffrey. I invited Reese into the call. Reese's art was too good for me though, and after around an hour of making art, I decided once again to switch over to vector art and part ways with the pixel art god. This time, I made something I actually quite liked. 2D art really isn't my forte, so we'll stick with this for now and hopefully people pity me when it comes to ratings. All the foundations are now set up to start creating the core gameplay loop. The first thing I'm going to do is fix the snowball's rotation. Next, I moved on to the melting mechanic. And as you can see, there's a little bit of bouncing as the player moves, but personally, I actually think it adds game feel and I can't be bothered fixing it, so it's going to be a feature for now. Next, I worked on the spawning system. This works at the moment by just adding an entity object to an array and looping through each of them every frame and moving them downwards. I then refactored the code so that there were two new classes, enemy and snowball, that inherited from the entity class. The enemies will kill the player, and the snowballs will add to the player's volume, hindering the melting effect. Either the snowball or the enemy will be chosen randomly when the entity is spawned. If three enemies spawn in a row, then the game just forces a snowball out to keep things fair. Once I added the snowball and enemy functionality, I pretty much had a complete game. The only thing left to do now is sound effects and a menu. I loaded up BFXR, which is a little procedural sound effect program, and made some basic sounds. I also added an incredibly basic main menu and a score counter, and there we have it, a completed game. Something does seem missing though, yeah that, that's much better. With that I made some art of the itch page, hit publish and the jam was finished. I definitely want to do more of these challenges in the future, so if that is something you'd like to see then make sure you're subscribed and hop in the discord. I've uploaded the source code for this project if anyone is interested in checking it out, and I've left it in the state it was in at the end of the jam, however given the chance I'd probably do a lot of things differently. Thanks for watching.